Hello viewers, it's not so often that I make a video or get to make a video such as this one. Today we're actually looking at a product that is somewhat finalized. I can actually really comment on it in a uh, surefire way instead of really being, you know, worried that this product's going to change a lot and my video is going to become outdated. Today we're looking at what might be the best AI upscaler that you can actually get your hands on. And this was actually suggested to me by a viewer of the channel, so I'd like to, to thank that viewer for suggesting I review this. Yeah, so this is a product you can download, I'll link it down below. And uh, yeah, you can use it on your computer at home as an installed application, which is really nice. And it installs nice and has nice UI. Here is the website for it. Of course, it's called Gigapixel by Topaz Labs. You can download it for Mac or for your Windows machine. And I guess it also works with Photoshop. But yeah, here is the before image and here is the after image. So yes, very impressive. It really does seem like they specialize in faces no less so if you'd like to upscale a lot of ai imagery that particularly involves faces then this might be your best bet or if you just want to upscale actual face imagery then this also might be your best bet uh, but it seems to work really well in pretty much all areas and we're going to really be putting it to the test today and uh, testing it out with different ai generators that might generate in a lower resolution than desired and we're going to we're going to do some upscaling fun today basically and exploring this so you can try it for free which is what i will be doing you can essentially use the whole program for free which is a really nice free demo and of course, you can just buy it outright for $100. I know that's very expensive. However, there's no subscription plan over this. You don't have to pay over $100 for a year of usage. You just get the program forever, which is really nice to see these days. I am sick and tired of these companies that just do these subscription models for a service that shouldn't really be a subscription. Anyways, as you can see, used by all these professional companies mentioned in various stuff. You can see the demos and stuff on the website. It all looks very impressive. And uh, yeah, they're really using these examples as like actual photos and stuff, which of course really is what it's mainly used for. But we're going to be testing this thing out with AI generated imagery because that's just how we do on the Matt Vid Pro channel. There's some examples of actual YouTube videos testing this stuff out as well. So yeah, this is not really something that's brand new by any means, but I just wanted to showcase it on the channel because yeah, this is really cool technology. Anyways, back to my example here. This is actually a stable diffusion generation that I made. And yeah, I mean, that is a kitten that is standing on the water like Jesus, who is about to be crushed by a flying suitcase. So yeah, that's, it's a very scary generation here. But no, the prompt actually was not that. The prompt was an award-winning professional photo of a kitten balancing on a red suitcase that is floating in the middle of the ocean at sunset. There are suitcases and airplane debris floating in the water in the background taken on a Hasselblad. I mean, it's a nice generation nonetheless. It's decently coherent, but yeah, this suitcase is about to crush this little kitten. Anyways, when I press down here with the mouse, we can zoom in and see the original generation. That is very low resolution stuff right there. And if I let go, it shows me the actual upscaled generation. So yeah, we really didn't have a lot of detail or information there in the original 5x12x5x12 five by 12 by 5 by 12 resolution image. And Gigapixel doing a 4x on this does an incredible job, I think, and really capturing some extra detail. I mean, it really didn't have a lot to go off of, and the eyes are obviously a little screwed up, but you know, that could also just be because Stable Diffusion screwed up the eyes and not Gigapixel screwing up the eyes. And it brings out the fur in a very realistic way. There's a little bit of chromic aberration here. Um, but it might be picking that up just based off of the, the pixels that were originally in the stable diffusion generation. But it got the pause right. And honestly, the water looks very decent as well. You know, if you see with Dolly 2's upscaling, sometimes it'll like if, if it tries to generate a fuzzy animal, you'll just get a bunch of fuzziness that's spreading around the entire image, which is super weird. So, yeah, I think this upscaler that we're viewing right now is better than Dolly 2's built in upscaling. So, yes, Dolly 2 uses built in upscaling for those of you who don't know. So, yeah, let's give this a shot on some more imagery. And we'll also be playing around with a few of these settings here. There's not too many settings, but it's still, you know, robust enough. Here in Crayon, I generated a cute cat trying to eat a watermelon several times. Some of these generations are just straight up nightmare fuel. That is probably one of the most horrifying things that I have ever seen in my life. However, I think we got some decent-ish ones. We got this one, 
which is kind of interesting, although the, the cat has two different colored eyeballs. We've got this one, which isn't half bad either, for crayon, that is. Honestly, I'm going to have to go with this one as my favorite, so what we will do is save this one. I'm just going to go ahead and just crop it so it is only the generation that we have. And now we will just plug this very low resolution image into Gigapixel and see what it does. We'll go ahead and open this up and it automatically begins to upscale the image for us. It takes a little bit. It's actually pretty quick, I have to say, and I don't think it does it on your local machine, but here it is. I mean, it definitely improved the overall image quality as a whole. It's definitely a little bit more visible and it's better than what it was, but it's still nowhere near perfect as you can see. It's making out a few more details, but that's with the low resolution model and we can change up the model. So we'll try the very compressed model and we'll see if uh, the very compressed gigapixel model can do any better. Okay, it did a little bit better in my opinion, but no cigar. It's not really getting it perfect. It's definitely a little bit better, um, but it's not perfect. It's adding actually a little bit of hair here in the watermelon. Let's just try the standard base model and see if it, we can get anything decent out of that one. Okay, with the standard model, it's definitely a little bit worse. It's pretty close to the original image actually just a little bit nicer let's try lines just for the heck of it i don't think lines or the art and cg models are going to be much better and no i was correct on that let's try art and cg now okay yes so it turns out that the art and cg wasn't much better either but the very compressed model is definitely the best i think out of all of them the lower resolution's a little bit sharper, but it just doesn't really look very usable. The most usable one's definitely this uh, super compressed one. There's also a remove blur setting here that we can uh, surround with, which might make it a little bit better. And we can also suppress noise, see what this does. Okay, suppress noise actually does quite a bit. That, that seemed to actually help our image quite a lot. Now we have a actually quite usable, I think, image here, the suppress noise button really seem to help this specific crayon generation. However, you know, we do so, let's see a little bit of hair here in the watermelon, just, just a little bit. So yeah, messing with these settings definitely can do some good for you when using a Gigapixel. So as it turns out, this really low resolution cat generation turned out pretty decent when messing with the settings. I mean, that's nowhere near perfect, but also this generation is very messed up as a whole, I think and it did some decent recovery on it, given the circumstance. I also tried this same prompt in Dolly, but as a 3x3 grid, similar to a previous video I made, which I will link in the description, where I show you how to get more bang for your buck with Dolly, we can test out this AI upscale with these lower resolution Dolly 2 generations. So these are all cats trying to eat watermelons, and um, I'm going to go ahead and pick this cat right up here, as the one that is going to see an upscale. So this is a pretty low resolution image, but not as low resolution as our crayon generation. So we'll go ahead and save this and toss it in to Gigapixel. So we'll go ahead and toss this in here. I'm gonna turn the suppress noise down as well. So we're using the same very compressed model for this one at the beginning and we will see how it fares. Ooh, okay, it did not like that one very much. We've got some very smoothed out, gross textures. Um, I mean, fair enough, there's not really a lot of data there, and it is an AI-generated image, um, but let's just go ahead and we'll try the low resolution and see if we get some more. Okay, it's, it's doing the same stuff now. Let's see, standard. Okay, it's just very smooth. Is it the suppressed noise again? Okay, turning up suppressed noise doesn't really help in this case. Maybe it's the remove blur function. Let's try turning off remove blur and suppressed noise. Okay, okay, it looks like it was the face recovery that was actually messing with the model here. So we'll turn those back up, remove blur and the suppressed noise. Okay, so now we have a much better output from this model. So yeah, if you guys are having trouble trying to get this thing to work as effectively as it's advertised, definitely play around with the settings because they definitely can make a huge difference here in the quality. It was the face recovery. Look at this. The face recovery was totally messing with our final output. I mean, we don't really have a face in this. It's a cat and a watermelon. Um, but, you know, I think it did a pretty decent job recovering the image. Yeah, so it was pretty low resolution. And then we just let go here and we've got nice details. It definitely was able to pick up on all of the cat's fur very well, I think. It really did a great job restoring that cat's fur. I mean, that's what we had before. 
And that's what we ended with. I mean, that is that is genuinely shockingly good, I think. And uh, I think it did a pretty decent job distinguishing the watermelon from the cat fur. I mean, it looks a little bit furry, but, you know, it's not so bad. I mean, these fingers were just so badly generated from the beginning, I don't think there was any, any sake in being able to help those fingies. One thing now that I want to test out is taking this model further. Let's upgrade from 4X to 6X. And uh, yeah, you can see it definitely uh, does a little bit of even, I think, a better job here. Really just getting those fine details in there. Almost really no errors, at least in the, the cat fur. I mean, this little eyeball is still really gross and it has no eyeball over here, but lots of really nice fine details, I think, that it's able to... I mean, that's what we had before and that's what we ended up with. That is some really good restoration, if I do say so myself. So next up, we're going to be giving this AI-generated bonsai tree by Stable Diffusion on Upscale. As you can see, it's actually a very, very good generation. I mean, I would be fooled into thinking that's a real image, but we're going to throw it in this upscaler and see if it can really pick out the details on this one. I have high hopes indeed. All right, so throwing it into the model here with our base settings, I'm just going to turn face recovery completely off here. We don't need that. So now with the final model here, as you can see, this is actually trying to do it on 6x. Whoops, I'm going to turn that back down to 4. As you can see, that is our before image and that is our after image. So as you can see, it's kind of a little bit AI generated here around the edges, not super realistic. I mean, you can tell that it's using some sort of an AI upscaler or that it was originally an AI generation maybe. Um, but, you know, it, it definitely looks all right nonetheless. Let's try to change up the suppressed noise, the remove blur. Maybe turning those off will give us a better generation. We can also play around with a few different models as well. We'll try the very compressed one. Maybe the very compressed one is a little bit better at this specific task. Try low resolution. Okay, ro low resolution isn't too bad either. I think low resolution might actually be my favorite here. Um, but yeah, none of them are really doing all that bad of a job with this one. Uh, it's definitely enhancing the photo no matter what. You know, it makes it more of a usable image than this low resolution one. And uh, overall, I think it was uh, pretty much worth it, especially when you zoomed out. I mean, when you zoom in, you kind of can see those find like little AI generated details in there, but zoomed out definitely looks a lot better. Just really sharp, especially down here near the rocks and the, the moss and all that stuff. It actually looks pretty decent. So yeah, overall, this is a pretty decent result here from the Gigapixel AI upscaler. So now I would like to go ahead and give a user submitted generation a shot. So this is actually from someone on my Discord, which uh, you can join my Discord with the link in the description. The prompt for this, it was generated in crayon, by the way, was a Polaroid photo of a man in 1995 wearing a lemon costume and sunglasses. So it's just kind of this creepy old Polaroid of a guy in a weird homemade lemon costume with these big glasses. So I wanted to see if it was able to upscale something weird and random like this. All right, tossing it in here and it does a, a very quick job because it's a very low resolution image. But actually, that is not too bad of an AI upscale. I mean, we can't really tell anything that's going on in the background. I mean, in the blurry one, it's not really clear what those images are either. But, you know, it definitely does something. Face recovery doesn't really help too much here either. Let's try doing a 6x on this and zooming in. Yeah, I mean... You're definitely getting some more detail out of the scene in general. You're actually getting a little bit of that Polaroid look, I think, maybe. Um, but yeah, in general, it's just this weird, creepy Polaroid. It's definitely a better image, more usable, like I said before. Uh, messing around with the different models. Yeah, I mean, not so bad. Not so bad at all. <laughs> it's definitely still a weird, intangible image, but... It's a little bit more high resolution. So speaking of faces, let's give Morgan Freeman's face generated with, I think this is Stable Diffusion, a shot here. So it's really uh, putting in some, some work here, generating um, Morgan Freeman's. And these are all in 6X as well, so this is going to be very highly detailed. And let's see if it did some decent enough face recovery here. And remember, all of these Morgan Freemans are AI generated. So honestly, it did a pretty decent job here. I think at, at the faces, it's it's humans are very sensitive to faces. So we're going to pick out any little minute details. I mean, Stable Diffusion did a pretty decent job originally with the faces, I think. And uh, yeah, I think it in general made them a little bit cleaner, a little bit better. They look a little bit 3D rendery, though, especially this one down here. It looks kind of like it's from a Morgan Freeman video game. but. Yeah, interesting results nonetheless.
All right, folks, I think that is going to be it for me today. Thank you so much for watching this video. And yeah, go check this out. The free trial is really amazing. You can almost pretty much use this software for completely free. Download it for Windows and Mac and stuff if you think it's nice. And I will definitely be using this one in the future for my AI generations. Let me know what you think in the comments and check out some of my other videos. Thanks for watching and goodbye.